Summary of a Lesson Before Dying by Ernest Gaines In the southern part of Louisiana in the 1940s, close to the town of Bayonne, a young black man by the name of Jefferson is put on trial for the murder of an elderly shopkeeper called Alcee Grope. The white lawyer says that he and two other black men killed Grope, took Grope's money, and then drank a bottle of whiskey to celebrate. The defense lawyer, who is also white, says that Jefferson was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He says that the two killers drove him into town and then started shooting at each other. In the end, Jefferson's lawyer asks the 12 white men on the jury to spare his life because he is poor and black, and killing him would be like killing a pig. Still, the jury decides that Jefferson is guilty and orders him to die at a date that will be set later. Grant Wiggins, who tells the story in the book, is a black teacher who lives with his aunt, Taunt Lou, who has raised him since he was a kid. Lou is close with Jefferson's grandmother, Miss Emma Glenn, who has raised Jefferson since he was a baby. Even though Emma says Grant doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to, Lou demands that Grant go to Jefferson's jail cell and show him how to die like a man instead of a pig. Grant says no because Jefferson is pretty much dead, but Lou is so insistent and strong that he agrees to help her talk to the sheriff about letting Jefferson have guests. Emma, Lou, and Grant go to the home of Henri Picot, a rich white man for whom they used to work, and ask him if Jefferson can come visit. Picot says, I'll talk to the sheriff, which makes him angry. A few days later, Picot calls Grant to his house. There, he and Sheriff Sam Guidry, who are both very prejudiced against black people, tell Grant that he can visit Jefferson as long as he doesn't make any problems. In the weeks before Grant's first visit, he keeps teaching first through sixth graders at the separate school he runs in the local church. The neighborhood is sending wood to the schoolhouse, as they do every year, so that it can stay warm during the winter months. As Grant watches old men carry wood, he thinks that his students will end up working like these men and won't use any of the information he's teaching them. He remembers when he was a kid and went to the same school where he now works. Grant worries that he'll end up like Matthew Antoine, his old teacher, bitter, disappointed, and with nothing to show for a lifetime of teaching. Grant often spends the afternoons at the Rainbow Club in nearby Bayonne with his beautiful girlfriend, Vivian Baptiste. Vivian is still married and has kids, but she and her husband are in the process of splitting up. She and Grant love each other a lot. During Grant's first trips to Jefferson, Tant Lou and Miss Emma go with him. Even though Emma cooked Jefferson wonderful food, he doesn't talk to her much at all, and her silence hurts a lot. Grant gets used to what happens when he goes to see Jefferson, he is checked, Sheriff Guidry sometimes makes fun of him for thinking he can teach Jefferson anything, he is marched past the other prisoners, and then he is given an hour to talk to Jefferson. On Grant's first visit to Jefferson by himself, he brings Jefferson Miss Emma's food. Jefferson eats it like a pig and says that he's being fattened up like an animal before it's killed. Grant keeps going to see Jefferson for the next month, but these trips are almost as useless as the first one. Grant sees, though, that even though Jefferson doesn't talk much, he can't wait to be with him. Grant also becomes friends with the young white policeman, Paul Bonin, who often walks him to Jefferson's cell. Paul is white, but he doesn't treat Grant or Jefferson badly because of it. Taunt Lou, Emma, and the community's pastor, Reverend Ambrose, talk Sheriff Guidry's wife, Edna Guidry, into convincing her husband to let them all visit Jefferson together. This means that they have to sit in the jailhouse's day room instead of Jefferson's cell. In the meantime, Grant presents Vivian to his family. We learn that Grant no longer goes to church, which hurts Taunt Lou a lot because she and almost everyone else in the town are Catholic. Taunt Lou is nice to Vivian, but when she finds out she is getting a divorce, she is upset and tells her to remember God. After that, Grant tells Vivian that he doesn't know what he's doing with Jefferson and suggests that they move to a place far away. Vivian won't do it because she cares too much about the kids she teaches, she says. She also tells Grant to keep talking to Jefferson, saying that even though it doesn't look like Jefferson is changing, he is. Grant's school puts on a Christmas play every year in December, and the whole town goes to see it. 
Even though everyone has given food and clothes to the play and loves singing Christmas songs, Grant is sad because he puts on the same play every year and doesn't see any change. Then, at the beginning of February, Henri Picot tells Grant that the judge has set the second Friday after Easter as the date for Jefferson's death. With the help of Vivian, he tries to calm and help Miss Emma. She tells him that he and Ambrose must turn Jefferson into a man before he dies. On Grant's next visit to Jefferson's cell, he finds out that Jefferson wants a radio so he can listen to music while he waits to die. He borrows money from Joe Claiborne, the owner of the Rainbow Club, to buy a radio, which he gives to Jefferson the next day. Reverend Ambrose is angry that Grant gave Jefferson a box of sin, but Grant says Jefferson needs to stop thinking about his death. On his next solo visit to the jail, Grant brings Jefferson a bag of nuts that his students have collected. He also tells Jefferson that he is going to give him a notebook and a pencil so that Jefferson can write down his thoughts. At the end of this visit, Jefferson gets up and tells Grant to thank his kids for the peanuts. Right away, Grant knows he's made a breakthrough. Grant, Taunt Lou, Reverend Ambrose, and Miss Emma all go to see Jefferson in the day room not long after he has his big idea. Miss Emma made a big pot of gumbo for the visit, but Jefferson won't eat any of it. Grant and Jefferson move around the room at a slow pace. As they walk, Grant tells Jefferson that he needs to be a hero, even more of a hero than Grant could ever be, and stand up to the racist whites who have put him to death by being brave and strong. He tells Jefferson that the best thing he can do for Miss Emma is to eat some of the gumbo she made for him. Jefferson sits down and eats some of the gumbo, making Miss Emma happy. Later, Grant has a party at the Rainbow Club, where he fights with two mulattoes who think that Jefferson should have been killed a long time ago. Vivian takes Grant back to her house, where he tells her he loves her and needs her help while he is in Jefferson. Vivian says that Grant doesn't know what love is, and Grant is about to leave when he sees he has no one else to turn to. He goes back into Vivian's house and hugs her. A few weeks before Jefferson is to be killed, Reverend Ambrose goes to see Grant and tells him that by giving Jefferson a radio and never talking about heaven, Grant is putting Jefferson's soul in danger. This causes them to get into a heated fight, during which Grant says he believes in God but not in heaven. Ambrose says that he has had to lie to his audience in order to make them feel hopeful and optimistic. He comes to the conclusion that Grant is a fool for not knowing that people need hope and heaven to be strong. On Grant's next visit to Jefferson, he tells Jefferson that he doesn't believe in heaven, but that God says people should be kind to each other. The next chapter is made up of parts of Jefferson's diary, which Grant gave to him in a notebook. In English that isn't very good, Jefferson says that Henri Picot and his friend gave him a penknife. Jefferson doesn't know this, but Picot has made a bet that Jefferson will kill himself before he's killed, so he gave Jefferson the penknife as a possible way to do it. Jefferson also writes about telling Miss Emma goodbye. In the end, he thanks Grant for training him and says that no one else has ever treated him so well. The next chapter is told from the points of view of different people who saw different parts of Jefferson's death. Reverend Ambrose is getting ready to read the 23rd Psalm to Jefferson. At the same time, black and white workers see a truck with an electric chair drive up to the building. Sheriff Guidry tells the people in the jail that Jefferson needs to shave so that the electric chair will work. Paul makes plans for him to get a haircut. When Paul is about to leave Jefferson's cell, Jefferson asks him if he will be there for the execution. Paul says he will do it. Grant doesn't go to Jefferson's execution, but he tells his students to stay on their knees and pray until he hears that Jefferson is dead. He then leaves his classroom. He walks outside and thinks to himself that he was wrong to argue with Reverend Ambrose. Because he believes in God and heaven, Ambrose is much stronger than Grant will ever be. Grant knows that Jefferson has been killed, so he goes back to the classroom. On the way, he runs into Paul, who just got back from the execution. Paul shakes hands with Grant and tells him that when Jefferson was killed, he was the bravest person in the room. Paul says that Grant must be a great teacher. Grant says that Jefferson taught himself. 
Grant walks back into the schoolhouse in tears after Paul gives him Jefferson's notebook. About the author. Gaines was born on a farm in Louisiana's Point Capi Parish. He was a member of the fifth generation of his sharecropper family. His aunt raised him and his 11 younger brothers. When he was young, his parents left Louisiana to find work, so when he was 15, he went to San Francisco to live with them. He served in the military when he was in his mid-twenties, and then he won a prestigious scholarship to study literature at Stanford University. He wrote three books in the 1960s, Catherine Carmier, Of Love and Dust, and Bloodline. Even though these works got good reviews, Gaines didn't get both critical and financial success until 1971, when she published the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. After this book did well, he got the highly regarded Guggenheim Fellowship and started teaching creative writing at the University of Louisiana in Lafayette, which is close to the farm where he was born. During the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, Gaines taught and wrote a lot. He published many short stories and the books A Gathering of Old Men and A Lesson Before Dying. The latter was nominated for the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Critics Circle Award. Even though it didn't win either award, the book was very popular and got good reviews, which led to Gaines getting a MacArthur Genius Grant. Gaines died in 2019. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.